Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Freaks with a Z, the podcast about movies. Each episode is about a specific movie, and we'll get to this one's in a little bit. But first, I always got to invite you, the listener, to suggest movies for us for our fan vote. Uh, during Tay's episode, which is counting this one two episodes from now, or one episode from now, whichever way you want to look at it, um, the fan vote will happen. So if you have a movie recommendation, uh, new ones get in first. <clears throat> uh, they, they trump the older ones, so... If you want to, uh, go ahead and send us an email at ff.filmstreaks with a Z at the end at gmail.com or comment on the latest episode of the podcast on YouTube or jump over to the Ferret Nation Discord, link in the description, and talk in the movie stuff section to recommend a movie. Let's go ahead and introduce ourselves before we talk about it. Uh, I am Yemi the Ferret, and I'm here with... Pretty Waffles. Hey, Mason. Brave Positivity. Hello, 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 and hello. 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 Happy July, everyone. <laughs> happy July, and also, happy birthday, Greeny Waffles. Happy Ooh. birthday. Tomorrow, right? Happy it's birthday. tomorrow, but this podcast will come out uh, after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it'll be yeah. two weeks after, right? Yeah. Congratulations, you're old. <laughs> oh, uh, thanks. It's still pretty young. <laughs> Yeah. Greeny, what was your birthday wish? Can't tell um, you, else it won't come true. Well, yeah, technically, technically this is... I'll the, tell you next episode. Okay, next time. All right, next episode. That works. Well, Do you have big birthday plans? Nope. <laughs> Those are the best. Yeah, I'm working tomorrow, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I did work, I should say. <laughs> How was your day? Oh, I guess it was good. <laughs> Oh, okay, awesome. <laughs> well, hey, speaking of birthdays, it was Cusco's birthday in the movie that we watched this past week. And that movie was The Emperor's New Groove from 2000, directed by Mark Dindal. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's about uh, Cusco, who is a self-centered emperor, uh, summons Pacha from a village to tell him that his home will be destroyed to make room for Cusco Topia. And, of course, uh, he gets turned into a llama after he tries to fire Yzma. And uh, Kronk loses him. And the story goes from there. And this stars uh, David Spade, John Goodman, Eartha Kitt, Patrick Warburton, and many, many more. And, uh, obviously, this one, uh, it's got it's a, it's a bit of a nostalgic touch for me. Uh, I watched this movie a lot when I was, like, uh, well, well, how old would I have been when this movie came out? 2000? I would have been... I was like 10. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was uh, 10. So, uh, yeah, it's one of those movies that I just have a lot of um, nostalgia for. And I remember watching this <clears throat> with uh, my cousins and my sister, and we could literally quote this movie from start to finish, like with all the, the quips and the funny moments and stuff like that, and um, I, 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 you know, during this watch through, I was still laughing. I still had a good chuckle here and there. I think that, um, well, I guess it's it's not too big of a surprise that Kronk got a sequel movie, kind of dedic, you know, uh, surrounding <laughs> him. Like he was definitely like stealing the show whenever he was on screen. Um, the voice actor did such a good job to bring his character to life, and I, I'm I'm so glad that he was around for so much of the movie because. Like every line that came from him was like absolutely quotable, uh, from <laughs> from his you know the <clears throat> from his usual mannerisms and uh, the the beginning when he's like doing his own soundtrack, and then all the way to the end when he's talking squirrel and uh, Yzma's there as the cat and she's like squeakity squeak squeak squeakers and it's just <laughs> it's great I, I love I love Kronk I mean I like all the characters in the movie but Kronk. Uh, Definitely stole the show whenever he was oh, yeah. on screen. For sure. I have a For friend sure. that sounds like Kronk, and there'll be times when we're like gaming together or something, and he'll go, "Oh yeah, it's all coming together," <laughs> and like it's perfect. Yeah, I love it so much. I wish I could that do that. That was pretty voice. good too for you, actually. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I've had years of practice. <laughs> years. <laughs> years. I mean, this movie is now twenty-four years old. 
Wow. Crazy. Yeah. Um, I, you know, same thing. You know, I watched this when I was younger um, and enjoyed it. Um, but I found, like, it's still a really good movie. And I still really mm-hmm. like it. But I find it not quite as funny without people. If you're just watching it by yourself, it's just kind of like, oh, yeah, that's a classic line. But there's no one here to share it with, so... I still laugh. <laughs> well, you have us. <laughs> well, we didn't watch it together, though. Oh, true. But you have us now. I did. And again, it's a, it's a good movie. Uh, it's a quotable movie. But yeah, just if you watch it by yourself, and it's still good. Like, I still enjoyed it. But I didn't find myself, like, laughing as hard as, like, if I watch it with people. Fair. So. Yeah, def- definitely not as hard of laughs as when I was a kid, but I, yeah. I still had a good chuckle here and then. Oh, yeah. No, like I said, it's still enjoyable. It wasn't I, like I was sitting there going, God, this is boring. It's still a fun watch. Yeah. No, I still enjoyed it thoroughly. <laughs> yeah, kind of like the, the same thing happened with uh, when we watched Kung Pao, because like, that was another movie that I like, used to like <laughs> roll on the floor <laughs> laughing while watching. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I still find it funny and I still laugh, but... It's not as hard as it was before, you know. The the jokes aren't landing at the same way because I'm older and yeah. But then there's other jokes, like especially with I mean, I guess in the Emperor's New Grooves, there's a couple of jokes that are extra funny because now you get the context, like when Yzma pulls up her dress and <laughs> yeah. you think that she's oh. yeah, yeah, they think that she's like about to like show her show them her uh, her vagina, you know, <laughs> and it's actually ah, oh, but it's just a knife there. Like I laughed pretty I hard that, at that I because I got that as a. I mean, I saw this in high school, so I guess yeah, I got that growing up yeah, when well, I first you know, saw it. Yeah, I was like... Well, you weren't 10. Yeah, I was like so. 10. So. <laughs> yeah, you weren't 10. <laughs> when I was watching I the movie. five years <laughs> more experience with the world. <laughs> well, you went through sex education. We had not even been That's there yet. That's true. Yeah. 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 I, did, I had done that, I think, twice or three times by that point. I don't Wait, remember. Three times? Well, you get it in, like, fifth grade and then kind of again in sixth grade and then seventh grade and tenth grade. <laughs> Oh, see, I thought you were just taking a class for fun. No, no. <laughs> That's for a different podcast. Yeah. 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 Oh, no. I think it's great that they were able to incorporate so many jokes that go for both kids and adults. And I will just say that Disney sleeps so hard on the Emperor's New Groove. Like, in every way possible, and it makes me so sad. Like, there's nothing. Sorry if you heard that. <laughs> you cat cat cat's going crazy for that yeah. person. <laughs> there is nothing like at Disneyland or World to like properly show this movie what it deserves, and it just. Oh, I think uh, part. Of, yeah, part of that is just all the weird production stuff that went on with it. I think like there was yeah. no script. There, like. I don't know all the things, um, but I know there's video essays out there of all the yeah. things. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. But yeah, I just know like they had they didn't have a script, and then like Disney's like came to him like, hey, do we have to have a script for the vault? And they're like, oh, uh, shit. Well, give us give us a few days. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I remember hearing that um, it had to be rewritten a couple times, and like they had like it used to be more of a musical, and it turned into mm-hmm. less of that when Which when is good. all was said and done. Agree. Yeah, I, I don't mind it not being as musical. Like the first song about Cusco is like a banger. Like I was humming yeah. it before we were starting, just because it's it gets stuck in your head. Um, but I, I yeah, it didn't need to be a musical. I don't think it. I, I think it's better off not being a musical. But I think you know, Tay, you might be onto something where it's like it may, they probably thought that this was probably gonna be a bit of a flop because they didn't really have anything planned for it. Right? They were kind of piecing it together as they went. So like the parks never really had the emperor's new groove representation that it really needed and even nowadays like you go to like those stores like boxed lunch is one of them where you can go and get like disney stuff in like your local mall or whatever and yeah there's like maybe like uh they did like this jersey collection for uh, several different um disney properties and they they had an emperor's new groove like cusco a jersey that they sold but they really i mean and, and they do have like the little mini backpack here and there that you see yeah but other than that, there's really nothing like there's no like shirts with like booyah on it or you know anything like that. So it's 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 it is unfortunate that they really haven't. Well, oh, uh, it's so unfortunate they haven't marketed this movie. Uh, they haven't made more money from it, <laughs> right? 
but oh, like even I'm as like a kid, like there was nothing to like. I love this movie, I, but I couldn't buy a shirt. I couldn't buy a stuffed mm-hmm. animal. I couldn't do anything. Yeah, I would have. I would like to see you know in one of the parks, preferably the California one, since that's the one I could, closest one to me. Uh, like the the Isma Secret Laboratory r- roller coaster. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'll be. That would be hilarious and have the little alligators everywhere. And, yeah. Oh, that'd be so dope. Uh, they, 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 they changed uh, Splash Mountain to that Bayou Adventure. They could have made it into a uh, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, laboratory. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, <laughs> Boom, baby. Yeah, I, I, mean, I guess at this point, it's, yeah. I mean, this point, Splash Mountain like, worked better for it was already kind of Bayou themed, so it was a quick, easy fix to make it. And it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I, I'm pretty sure yeah. Epcot has like an Aztec area with like a temple, and I know this is kind of like Aztec-y, This movie is. Yeah. yeah. The, well, but they, they never really it. did anything for Emperor's New Groove with it, though. It's just kind of like it's Aztec. Like you could we literally all... theme it towards Emperor's New Groove if they really wanted to. But yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, with the Indiana Jones ride, you know, that's kind of like a temple, an Aztec-y temple. It's like mm-hmm. it's just like make two rides in one. Like, well, not <laughs> one, but like. You know, it's like, oh, this side is Indiana Jones, while that side is Emperor's New Groove, secret, Isma's secret laboratory. Yeah. <laughs> they should make, like, a 3D ride and have, like, the 3D glasses, like, look like the goggles that they wear. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. something. Like, like Star Tours. they could do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like, though, the the ship has sailed. I mean, two, you know, this movie's oh, yeah. on 2000, and I, yeah, I think that the general public is not thinking of Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> They every day be. i mean yeah they should be but i think it i think I mean, it is the the ship has sailed a bit but but then again like princess the and general the frog, public yeah say is the general public thinking about princess and the frog every day right I, yeah like that came out what 2014 or something like that and they just made that bayou adventure like the first no, thing i thought it, it came out after emperor's new groove 2014 yes that's that yeah. is after emperor's new groove <laughs> no i thought it i thought it came out after emperor's new groove it did princess and the frog in like 20 yeah, yeah, 20, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my brain just, Dis- no, my brain just Dis- So for and Princess the- and the Frog, Disney went back to the 2D, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. animation style. <laughs> sorry, for, like, an for some reason, I was thinking, like, when you said 2014, my brain went, like, oh, yeah, so that means this, no, this movie came out in 2020. <laughs> I don't no. know why. <laughs> no, I don't like, know. No, that's, that's before <laughs> this movie. It can't, and it, I know it came out after this movie. Yes, The brain, it hurts. My brain has been just mushed <laughs> for days. Get out of the sun. Well, Ugh. yeah, I, I will say yeah. that, like, yeah, Princess of the Frog, maybe not the first, you know, your first movie you think of when you think of Disney, but um, it definitely I mean, has its it, fans. I think it has a great yeah. art style, and I think that, like, the yeah. music's mm-hmm. amazing in that movie. Yes. And again, like I said, it was already, that ride was already Southern theme, you know, Bayou theme, whatever, so it's like, Hey, how about we take this racist movie and turn it into a not racist? Movie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was my favorite part that they yeah. they made it the black princess, yeah. her own ride, after being racist for years, and it yeah. makes my heart happy. Hmm. But anyway, so Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> an Emperor's New Groove. I mean, I feel like we've already touched everything on it. it it's a it's a short, fun watch. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about uh, uh, music? Music is pretty grooving, I guess oh, you yeah. could say. Heyo. Yeah, the, the soundtrack is different. excellent in this movie. Like, it's yeah. very mm-hmm. memorable. It's not one of the, it's not one of those soundtracks that's like gets lost in the in yeah. the script. Like, it it definitely um it's very fitting. Yeah, fitting music and like really fun. Like, I'll mention it again, but that 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 Cusco song at the beginning is just so good. Like Cusco. the. They they did such a great job with like the lyrics and the and the music all comes together. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I was having a blast mm-hmm. at the beginning and then they bring it back for the end. It's just a lot of fun. <laughs> but if you notice at the end too. At the end, it changed from being about Cusco to like we instead of him. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah. he learned a lesson. Because right. he learned a lesson. Yeah. And then at the end with the credits, uh, the Sting song, huh? How about that Sting song? <laughs> oh, was it Sting? I kind of thought it was like I'm like this sounds a little like like um, Phil Collins, but not quite. No, it's, it's Phil it, Collins. It, they literally like the first word that shows up is like song by Sting in like the beginning and end of the I movie. I didn't read the lyrics. Wait, it's not Phil credits. Collins. No, it's Sting. 
That's why it's Are sucks. you heckin' sure? Yeah, it's Sting. Like it said, like it said, it had a very like Tarzan-y like sound and feel to it. So I was just like, oh, they got Phil Collins for this too. Yeah, which his... is you know, Phil Collins was a big you know yeah. Disney. He did a lot of Disney stuff, especially mm. like Brother Bear and all that. No, this is Sting though. <laughs> This Emperor's but I'm not saying King. Phil Collins. No, I'm saying like <laughs> Phil Collins. Like I could see why they're confused about it. Well, the, the, the Sting song had a very different vibe from the entire movie. Like it was very dour oh, did, sure. and like very slow. And like you go from that mm-hmm. really crazy Cusco song at the end that it, it's building up and the credits pop up and it's like just a very soulful like slow song. And it's just like this is totally like early 2000s, late 90s like schlock here. Like. Oh yeah. Isn't sure. it bad? That's why I love it because every single like in in the nineties, every single Disney movie ended with this like R and B type like song that doesn't really go with the movie at all. But like that was that was their niche. Oh, I love it. That, I love it because it's so tacky. I wasn't vibing with this one. Like I, I enjoy my nineties slow pop, but this one just well, didn't do it for me. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't my favorite or anything, but I didn't mind it. And again, I mean. I it's like it a, it's so like cool. a smack in the like you you get smacked in the face and it's like the whiplash is this song like I mean, that yeah. slowed down like always, <laughs> Ray's right they always did that where it's just like okay guys bring it down here for the credits let's yeah. just appreciate and really think about what we just saw <laughs> like Mulan had such a, an awesome like powerful fun ending and then bam you're hit with like the the water droplet and like the slow it just yeah yeah no that was very common not just for disney just for 90s movies and (laughs) early 2000s movies that is true i'm I'm just thinking of like i can't remember for specifics but i just like i remember seeing like action movies and stuff where it was the same thing we're just like boom Oh. Like ends on a high <laughs> note and then immediately credits. It's like, okay, bring it down, calm down, everybody. Here we go. I know we hyped you up so much. We gotta calm you down now. <laughs> calm you down as you leave the theater. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when the, when the music slows like down, that's when people know the leave. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right, you don't to have to go home, but you can't stay here. And then modern movies change that by adding scenes at the end of credits. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, like, we got to keep you entertained through the credits so you stick around and see our little stinger of maybe a movie that could be coming out. At least the nice thing is they've been doing that, like, after, like, the initial credits where they, like, have yeah. it very stylized. I, I, yeah. In, Inside Out 2 didn't do that. They they still put their little extra credits scene at the very end of the credits. But um, most movies that you see, like, the, the quote-unquote end credit scene is, like, mid it's more like midway now for sure um um except for then you have those movies where they do a mid credit one and, and then an end credit one. yeah that was like peak marvel when they were hanging yeah, out that. movies yeah. like every <laughs> three months yeah. you know they're like and here's the little snippet for the next movie and then here's a special bonus for this movie and then, and then here's then... an even better bonus for a movie that's three yeah. years from now yeah. <laughs> or the sh- tv so show need... Eternals, you know, they did a thing for that night guy with Blade talking, Moon and then Knight? and not Moon Knight, but he had like the Dark Excalibur or something. I don't remember. Oh, I have no clue. And, and then and then it was them like meeting Thanos's brother and the bad CGI dwarf character. I don't know. <laughs> Is Thanos's brother <laughs> Thanos? No, his name is something else. He doesn't look like Thanos either. He looks he looks like that guy from One Direction. There's like f- five guys in One Direction. <laughs> there's only three, but I don't know. It's the oldest brother and the like and became an actor. Harry Styles? Yeah, that one. Oh my word. He was in Dunkirk. Yeah. Maybe he's they also were, they were trying brother. to yeah they were trying yeah, to get him to be Thanos' is. brother and that uh yeah well except for, and now like none of those movies are gonna see the light of day out ever well so. you know Marvel 
just oversaturated the superhero market. And they, they finally realized it, and they're like, we're going to take a step back. We're going to focus on quality over just throwing shit at the fan and seeing what sticks. <laughs> uh, which is good. I'm trying to think of a way to relate this back to the Emperor's New Groove, but I'm kind of failing here because <laughs> <laughs> it's usually a yearly Disney movie. <laughs> Do you I guys mean, have like a favorite quote from Emperor's New Groove? Oh, I mean, yeah. there's so many. <laughs> so yeah, yeah so many, so many. My, I mean, my one of my favorites is, <laughs> "Look what I can do." What does that have to do with anything? No, no, he's got a point. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, there's always I had me and my friends always quoted that one, and like we would do something stupid, and like, "What I can do? What does I have to do with it?" No, he's got a point. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I always enjoy when uh, the lady like gives Kronk the order. He's in like the kitchen. Oh, and yeah. He, he repeats it back like the you know um the the kitchen way instead of like the you know the way that she said. It's just it's it's yeah. a smooth smooth joke there. It's it's kind of in the back you know back of your mind kind of joke. Yeah. And then uh, like, obviously obviously pull the lever. Kronk is a big one. Oh yeah. 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 Why do we even have that lever? <laughs> <laughs> I like her whole segment about the flea, like turning him into a harmless little flea. Yeah, and then that's... put that flea in a box, and put that box in a box, another box, and then I'm gonna mail that box back to myself, or to save on postage, we'll post it with this. Yeah, <laughs> that's like one of my favorites. Yeah. Eartha Kit did a real good job on this movie. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> She's... He's still alive. He's not as dead as we would have hoped. <laughs> a llama, <laughs> and I like that, like just the visual gag of it. Like she, you know, dumped the poison, poison, quote unquote, into the pot, and then next time you see the shot, it the cactus is turned into a llama. Yeah, it's a subtle Shape. thing in the yeah. background. Yeah. Oh, also, also the line where um, they beat uh, Cusco <laughs> and and Pacha back oh. to the uh, the laboratory. And and Kronk's like, well, doesn't doesn't really make sense. <laughs> this this movie had a lot of like, I, I I would say that maybe this movie's a little bit ahead of its time with this comedy, being a little bit more meta. Like this was obviously before Deadpool and and a lot yeah. of other like breaking the fourth wall kind of movies. Like this one definitely was a bit, uh, uh yeah, ahead of its time with with that, uh, which is cool to see now because it's 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 still got relevant humor to this day it's not like all stuck in the old times like yeah sure there's some references to like some older pop stars and stuff but it's not it's not as like in your face as like aladdin or something where genie's doing like all these impressions of like people you don't know anymore you know yeah, yeah. no this That's movie true. definitely it holds up well like there yeah there's no pop culture references really enough any of that stand out um so it's it's something you can enjoy always Always and nice. forever. Always and forever. Yeah. I mean, that's not to say you can't enjoy Aladdin, but yeah. No, I there's mean, a yeah. Lot but... of, I there's a lot of, yeah, just the references where you're like, huh? who's that? What are you referencing there, Genie? Yeah, there's a couple of movies that use the references as, as like a crutch, and it really dates yeah. it. You, you DreamWorks is. Yeah, I'll say DreamWorks is notorious for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this this one, I, I feel like, yeah, you you go back go back and watch it twenty years from now and still find the same amount of enjoyment. I don't, I don't think uh, I don't think it will be unwatchable, or you won't be able to get what's going on in terms yeah. of like references because there's really no references. It's all just like your general stuff. <laughs> True, and it's visually pleasant, pleasing too to watch. You know, mm -hmm. it really is. Nothing sticks out like sore yeah. thumb. So I have a I have a fan theory now that I just came Ooh. up with right now. So, um, Pacha's wife is voiced by the lady who voiced Ida in the Owl House, and I think that it's the same character, and she just jumped to a different dimension and learned magic. Wow. That's my fan theory. That's a great fan theory. <laughs> I don't know what the Owl House is, but oh, you should watch it. It's really good. Okay. It's, so it's, a Disney, at a... it's a Disney cartoon. It's really good. Oh, it's a cartoon. I was say. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'll say yeah. now you got something to recommend. Yeah. No, it's on Disney Plus. So. Cool. Okay. It's very good. I'm definitely give it a watch. I shall. Yeah, I also like uh, John Goodman, like just in general. Mm -hmm. I think his voice is always just so great in any movies that he's in. He's very recognizable, but he just always yeah. puts on a great performance, whether it be Sully from Monsters, Inc. or um, yeah. Another was... fan theory. Just came. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sully. <laughs> right. Pachi got turned it's into getting a weird. And Pachi got turned into a monster, and then he oh, yeah. unturned into a he turned into a human, and that's where Ten Cloverfield Lane comes in. Yeah, <laughs> like it's all connected. <laughs> yeah, he's just. Uh, I yeah. wish that he was in like, I wish his voice was in more movies. I should say they're, they're, he yeah. he does have a limited like animated voice role repertoire. Um. I just I just love the way his voice sounds. Like, it's, I, yeah. and I, mean, I I obviously grew up with Sully and Pacha together, but like as a kid, yeah. I never connected the dots that they were the same person. Right? It's right. like when you hear like Jim Cummings do a bunch of different voices, and like nowadays, it's like, oh, that's Jim Cummings. But yeah, now you can tell yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, like the the guy that got thrown out the window, he's the same voice as um, Piglet and um, oh, the groove. Yeah, that guy. The groove. <laughs> yeah. Beware of the groom. Um, I forget. Oh, is it the snake from Jungle Book? Maybe. Snake? I don't know. <sighs> I don't either. But it's been so long since I've seen Jungle Book. Me too, honestly. Honestly, I don't even know if I've ever seen the full movie of Jungle Book. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's pretty good. Mm, sure. It just. I think I've only I mean, I've seen enough like enough of it to know the whole movie. Just there's probably at this point it's like three or four scenes I've never seen probably. That's fair. If that now, like I said, it might I may have seen all of it. It's just been so long I don't remember. I have that guy's IMDb up. What character were you thinking of that he voiced? Because he did a piglet. Yeah, and then I thought I thought the snake from Jungle Book, but I I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't see Jungle Book on his list of movies. Okay, maybe I'm thinking of Piglet. I don't know. Maybe it's just Piglet then. Something from Darkwing Duck, I'm sure. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think all the like vocal performances were pretty good in this movie I, I didn't, yeah. there was no one who like stuck out that was like bad <laughs> like not even like the yeah. kid characters were were yeah. bad like I well don't... i don't even think the kid care kids well were yeah they were voiced by, by adults kids. but like they weren't like yeah. bad adult kid yeah. voice actors yeah. <laughs> they weren't like out of place or anything yeah, yeah. you didn't listen and go yeah. well, that's a 40 year old man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and even in the game um i played the game last year and uh, like the voice acting is pretty strong in that one, they, and all the original cast members came back to uh, voice. I think most of them came back to voice the characters in the video game because they had to add extra lines in there because uh, yeah. they obviously were working on the game before the movie came out. And the game is a lot different, and I almost wonder if it was based around um, like a different draft of the movie. You know, <laughs> like yeah. Like, oh, yeah, Cusco's going to go through the forest and there's going to be, like, a giant bee. <laughs> like, like what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's also what they did in video games a lot, where they're well, yeah, like, they oh, just... we need a boss here. Uh, well, how about a bee? You yeah, know, a lot, a lot of times, like, they're also working on the game and the movie's, like, almost done, but they can't, like, reveal too much of the plot, so they have to, like, fill in the gaps. You know, like, yeah. I think they did that with... Um, uh, I want to say one of the Transformers movies had a spinoff like video game and it might've been yeah. revenge of the fallen actually that like had to, <laughs> had to take its own liberties and, and do its own thing. Cause they wouldn't reveal the yeah. plot to them or something. Oh, I remember the, like the King Kong game that came out after the movie and how like different it was from the movie, like Peter Jackson's King Kong. Not the... Yeah. Peter Jackson's King Kong, the original video game of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and then you play it and you're like, this is, I mean, I remember it wasn't a bad game, but it was oh, just no. like this is nothing like the the movie. Yeah, it's great. I, yeah. I still love that movie. Uh, not movie game. I game. love the movie too. Yeah. 
but I haven't seen the movie yeah. in a while, so I don't want to say that I love it and then like rewatch and be like, "Fuck that!" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the game oh, was the game, still fun, it's still good. I was like, the game, if I remember, it was definitely more action packed than the movie, and the movie, you know, had its action yeah, the scene. Movie had its action in it, but. The but game yeah. had to keep the action going throughout the whole thing, you know? Yeah. Especially because, like, the King Kong sections are, are few and far and in between. So it's like, oh, you got, like, a King Kong section here, and then you have to play another, like, 15 levels to play another King Kong section. Just like the movies. <laughs> Just like the movies. You got five minutes of King Kong and then 50 minutes of human error action. Yeah, but <clears throat> Peter Jackson's King Kong, the human stuff, if I remember correctly, was at least interesting. Yeah. And and like yeah. they were like fighting bugs and stuff, you know, so and dinosaurs and being attacked by dinosaurs and running yeah. from dinosaurs and tripping while being chased by dinosaurs in comical ways that was like, well, no one runs that bad. Mm. You know, like a well, horror have movie a dinosaur story, right? chase you and see if uh, how you trip. <laughs> <laughs> well. I I cannot run like thirty miles an hour, so I don't know if I would even try. <laughs> oh. I mean, it depends on the dinosaur. But, yeah. Anyways, Emperor's New Groove. Emperor's New Groove, <laughs> back at it. So the, um, the one thing that I didn't like about this watch that I guess I didn't really mind when I watched it when I was a kid. They uh, paused the movie like twice for Cusco to come in and like <laughs> scribble yeah. on the you know p the screen and whatever. And it's like it's really only two times I think in the entire movie that that happens. It just feels so out of place and like weird. Like Potch is having this moment next to the cart and Cusco's like, "Hey, this is where I am." He circles the bag <laughs> and he's like, "Not this guy." And I'm like, "That's it's not really f like funny. It's just kind of like a it's more like why are we doing this? Like we could literally." take the section out and the movie would be better. Like, yeah. Well, and especially because like, you know, at first it's kind of like this narrator, um, that he's doing, um, the Cusco. And by the end, he's like, see, I'm, I have been, you know, been ruined by these people. And then like the kid, the him in the movies, like, no, they saw it. They know what's true. And it's like, yeah, so why why include these stuff if he's going to be the one who points it out to his future self? Yeah, because yeah, that that part of the movie works where Cusco's a llama is talking to Cusco, the narrator. Yeah, that works. Like that's a funny little thing in a sad part of the movie. But when yeah, when they stop it work, and they pause though. it, it does. I yeah, think it well, does work because Cusco's been narrating the whole time. He's been a bit of a yeah. unreliable narrator. I think that was the word I could not remember. Unreliable. And uh, <laughs> um, he kind of sets him straight. And I, I get it. Like, yeah. The only thing that's weird is just because technically, as the narrator, he is in the future. And so to have, like, even when they catch up, I don't know, it just seems weird to have, you know, one be like, see, I was robbed. And then the other one go, no. I don't know. It just seemed a little weird to me still. But, like, it wasn't like, off-putting, but I wouldn't be like, "Oh, gross!" Never watching this movie again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I didn't. I, I actually liked that, but when they paused the movie for him to make his like fourth wall-breaking joke, and yeah. he pops up on screen, like, yeah, that's 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 when I go. That's when I'm like, ah, I, I don't like that. But when he's just talking as a narrator, you know, I think it's fine. To be honest, I kind of like the first one just because. It reminds you about how annoying and self-centered he is. Like, yeah. oh, I, fuck this Pacha oh, guy. Like, who that, cares about yeah. his feelings? <laughs> like, this is all about me. So, yeah, it's annoying, but I feel like it's supposed to be, you know? Yeah, I, I do feel like sometimes you just got to let the movie do its thing. And, like, that moment where Pacha is, like, realizing, like, how or trying to think of how he's going to tell his family that the house is going to be torn down, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel like that probably could have just given it some, you know, just had some legs there to, like, cook for a minute, you know? Not, not even a minute, just a just a scene or two. That's um, fair. And then they, they kind of take you out of it when when Cusco just is like, man, this is about me. Yeah. I didn't mind it. But I didn't see why. Yeah. Like, it's... I didn't mind it, but it wasn't. it's not like it adds to the movie. 
Right. And, and for me, it kind of detracts from that scene at least. Because um, you're having like a a nice moment of reflection <laughs> on what had happened. And yeah. I mean, I, I get Man. why they did it because, you know, it's a kid's movie and they got to keep the, the action flowing. They can't slow down too much. Um, but that, I felt like that scene, it didn't get, it didn't have its time to breathe. And I, I just feel like maybe, maybe have some sort of, not like super long monologue, but just something, you know, have Pacha say something and then, then you can have Cusco like jump in and be like, hey, remember when this movie was about me? And then he can do his thing. Because I do agree, like, yeah, it does show, like, how self-centered he was and blah, 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 blah. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, I just I just felt like the power of that scene where Pach is trying to think of a way to tell his family what's going on is, is it, it takes away from the power of that scene. That's all I'm trying to say. That's fair. Because mm-hmm. the rest of the movies, it, it flows really nicely. I don't have too many questions about things, you know, and, and, and any questions you do have, it's all like explained away and like, oh, well, it doesn't make sense, but we're going with it, you know, <laughs> which is fine because that's the vibe of the movie. You know, if, if yeah. they randomly yeah. did that without every other instance of like this kind of thing happening, then, then it'd be like, um, that's kind of weird. But no, it, it works with this movie because it, the entire movie is set up like that, where it's like, yeah, somehow they got here and somehow this happened and somehow Kronk can understand a squirrel and. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> well, anything else to add? I feel like I've said my piece. Um, I've been turned into a cow. Can I go home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah, great line. That's another good one. Come on, man. Nobody lost forever. I, f- I just love this movie so damn much. <laughs> yeah, I know we haven't really said too much about it, but in the end, like, the what is I mean? What is there really else to say about it other than like it's great, it's funny, watch it. Like that's yeah, pretty much. It's that's classic. All I say. It's, it's uh, hard to like describe. Like you just have to experience it to understand. And it has it has some cult classic. Um, I guess it does have a cult classic following in a way. Um, but I don't I don't know if it's like so cult classic that like you have to dig the fun because it's just on it's on disney plus it's available and I, I think most people know about the movie in in the in the wrong run yeah but yeah. yeah i guess i guess with it being a bit underappreciated by disney and not having a lot of representation outside of the movie itself um I, I guess you could say it is kind of a cult classic but it's also like it's still pretty popular so i don't, I don't know how culty it is you know <laughs> <laughs> well it's disney's <laughs> well yeah I mean, hey, you know what? You know what? You know what's a cult classic? Into the Wild. Remember that movie? <laughs> oh my word! They they what have that, that shit. They have that shit on Disney Plus. It's the one where like the that it was like made during the same time as Madagascar, Disney and uh, Pixar. Yeah, 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 not yeah, Pixar. Yeah. Uh, DreamWorks did like the same concept almost, <laughs> but Disney's was like much worse, and they like buried it <laughs> because it was so bad. <laughs> Literally forgot about that movie until you said it. <laughs> yeah, the only reason I remember it is because it a few times on this podcast. Yeah, well, yeah. I, the one reason I do mention it is because it's just so funny about just just how <laughs> yeah. much of a failure yeah. it is and how much Disney tries to hide it. It's just very funny. Mm-hmm. Also, Mars needs moms. Hello, cult classic <laughs> alert. Yeah, I have no idea what that is either. That's another dis. Check it out. Another Disney movie that flopped horribly and was terrible. Did it come, <laughs> when did that one come out? It came out during the same time as like the Adventures of Tintin and all all those like hyper realistic animated uh, movies. Okay. For some reason, like I'm just like, oh, that was like a fifties, early sixties era movie, right? Nope. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was Nightmare Fuel era animation. <laughs> I'm trying to think of another Disney movie that's so well, like Chicken Little, co classic alert. <laughs> oh. Uh, Meet the Robinsons. Can we talk that, about how I, underrated you know that, that movie that's, is? That's 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 yeah. That 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 actually is an. Un, uh, I think that would actually be considered a cult classic. Not it is. Many fantastic. people talk about that one. Oh, is it? I thought you were talking about it. <laughs> like brought it up because it's bad. No, actually, that uh, one is good. I'll, I'll agree with. Oh, it's I'll agree it was on great. Oh. I think after the third time, I stopped crying at the end. <laughs> 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 but oh, it's so freaking good. 
So yeah, I, I would say yeah that that movie is is actually a cult classic. This one is is a classic. I don't know if it's a cult classic. It's just a it's just a classic. Mm-hmm. That first new. It's, it's a cult ish classic. Yeah, it's kind of culty, but not like full cult. You know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's cult adjacent. Yeah, cult adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else y'all want to add before we get to the final rating and thoughts? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Until my review, that is. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, I'll go first since it was my movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, of course, still really enjoy this movie. I still had a pretty fun time with it. I laughed a lot during the during the 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 show and. Um, I thought the animation was pretty good. The music is fantastic. I didn't like the Sting song at the end, Sue Me, you know. <laughs> uh, and I also thought that the random pause scene, like, in the middle, well, not even in the middle, like, like not even a third into the movie, just it, didn't, it just felt a little bit out of place in terms of just, and it could have been, I don't know, it, maybe it's just me, but I, I, I wasn't a big fan of that single thing. But uh, the rest of the movie is great. Lots of quotable lines. I love Kronk. I love... East my love everything just works so well together especially after quite a quite rocky um build up to the release of this movie so um yeah i still really enjoy it um i'm gonna give it an an, an unapologetic four and a half out of five all right um yeah really fun nostalgic uh watch uh loved it as a child i was still Really enjoyed this movie. Really fun. Music's great. Visually, it's awesome. Um, <clears throat> love, you know, just... I still love the gimmicks and the jokes they have in it. Uh, it was just a fun, filled watch. Um, I did. I already said I loved music. Didn't mind the Sting song. Maybe I just didn't focus into it as much as Yummy did. I don't know. I just it didn't bother me as much. Uh, just overall, love the vibe of the movie. Um, it's definitely a hidden gem. Um... And I'll give it also a four and a half out of five. Yeah, you know me. I hate 21 guns and I hate Sting. Fuck Sting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, For me, like, you know, enjoyable movie. Um, It's just, it's fun. Um, Not as funny as it was when I was a kid, but it's still enjoyable. Still a good time. Um, You know, I like the voice acting and all that. Everything we talked about here. Um, but I also give it a 4.55. Sweet. Um, yeah, it, this movie brings back so many, like, great memories of, um, actually being able to sit down and watch Disney movies with my sister. I really miss doing that. We're seven years apart, and I, like, early 90s, or early, late 90s, early 2000s was, like, our bonding time, I guess? And so, like... This is one of our favorite movies, so I have a it's a soft spot in my heart for it. Um, I loved the actors, the, all of the really famous actors that were chosen to do this movie. I thought it was fantastic. Um, a little heartbroken and um, upset with myself that I didn't realize that that was Sting and not Phil Collins. They sounded hella similar, and so now I'm a little sad. But also, it kind of explains a lot. Um, and I will give this wonderful movie also a four and a half out of five. All right. Same score across the board. Haven't done that in a while. (laughs) Been a minute. Yeah. You know, the Tarzan soundtrack is so good. (laughs) It's like Phil Collins was like, like, Phil Collins was peak. He was right in the fire during that one. Like, Especially, uh, you'll be in my heart. Tarzan yeah very good really good all right greedy do you have a sweet nothing to whisper into our ear (laughs) all right um uh you know what i'm also gonna go with the nostalgia route um uh ray's probably gonna hate me for this one but uh you know i have to pick it because it's july and you know what's in July, right? 
I'm going to pick Independence Day, I, I 1996. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the aliens are coming, and their goal is to invade Earth and destroy Earth. Uh, fighting, fighting superior technology. Mankind's best weapon is the will to survive. Get it? Because Will Smith is in it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so, so um, some cast is Will Smith, Bill Pullman, Jeff Goldblum. He's in it. Oh gosh, oh, yeah. I didn't know he was. Oh yeah, he is in that. Yeah, but weird. Mary McDonnell, uh, Tud Hirsch, uh, Robert Ogia. Logia? Logia? Anyways, um, and some other casts, so... Uh, classic, uh, I used to like this movie, but it's been a while since I watched it, so... I'm not expecting four and a half. That's, I'd tell you that right now. (laughs) It's probably gonna be a a fun watch, at least. Like, pretty, pretty fun. Uh, you can watch this on Hulu, Google Play, YouTube... Prime. Uh, I th- it said only disc on here, but I think it is available Ouch. to rent too, so that should be fine. But okay, uh, let, me, yeah. let me double check. I thought it. I thought I saw it. Yeah, it says rent here, but okay. for some reason on on this list it just says disc buy. But when you go to all services, it shows it under rent. So I don't I don't understand why that why that's like that. But it sh- it should be on Amazon to rent mm-hmm. as well. And also, when I had uh, this movie released on my birthday. So, oh, July nice. wow. so it all it all works out. So oh, yeah. uh, if if it sucks, don't blame me. <laughs> well, <laughs> why do you think Ray's not going to like this movie? Because she hates gory movies, like she says. But it's alien oh, gory. It's it's yeah. aliens. I don't think that matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I have a feeling she's not very gory though. I'm going to go into this movie like I have with all the other ones and focus more on the cinematography and that kind of stuff rather than my like or dislike for the content. This is my first movie seen Will Smith since the whole slap and sit. Yeah, so yeah. I'll probably be thinking about that the whole time. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I, You know what? I have a prediction. I think this will be the first movie that has a lot of action that Ray's going to be like, wow, that was really good <laughs> it's a fun movie and like oh, yeah. so there's not like there's a lot of gore or anything in it <laughs> i'm just playing over what Grady said. I, yeah no we'll, we'll let gray talk for herself next time <laughs> but for now we'll live in this fantasy where ray just hates this movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'm sure. sure you're not far off no i'm just kidding okay. hey, we'll just see what happens my hulu count so i should go it expires like in the middle of this month so i should go watch this before it does Oh yeah, and be smart, and be smart. Actually, and it's the first one, uh, 1996. I don't know if I said that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there. Yeah, I saw the sequel. We'll, we'll talk. We cannot talk about the sequel too, if anyone's seen it. I I've seen the sequel. I never saw it. It looked I like I when wanted it first to came out, but, at first. Yeah. yeah, when it first was coming out, but then I didn't, and I heard it was bad, so I was like, oh. But we can talk about that yeah. next time. Yeah, we'll talk. Of course, yeah, we'll talk about it next time. Yeah. When the podcast reconvenes in two weeks, if you don't want to be spoiled, if you want to join the conversation, or if you just want to rewatch it, make sure you watch Independence Day 1996, directed by Roland Emmerich, uh, by the next time the podcast comes out. And, of course, if you yourself, the viewer, wants to suggest a movie for us, you can do so in the places that I mentioned before. Uh, we accept all movies um, non-pornographic. Uh, so you can re- re- recommend movies to your heart's content. And now is the time of the show where we ask the people, uh, is there any small recommendations you have for the viewers at home or the listeners at home? Any, It could be movie, uh, TV show, book, etc. Anything y'all want to recommend? Um, I started watching The Bear, and it's really, really good. So I recommend The Bear. Yeah, the I, finished that season. I haven't finished the <clears throat> second season yet, but I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, it's really good. I, I really enjoy it. I just have trouble sitting down and watching it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I just started like the first season, so it's such an ang- anxious, like anxiety-inducing, yeah. uh, angry yeah. show. show. Yeah. <laughs> I don't watch shows like that anymore. Just that's fair. The second season kind of s- smooths out a bit, but it's it's still got that anxious tone to it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. 
Um, well, um, again, yeah. I'll recommend The Owl House for Ray. And anyone else who wants to watch it, it's a good show. It's on Disney. Uh, Disney Plus, I believe it's still on there. I don't know. I don't have Disney Plus anymore. <laughs> you trying should get save... Disney Plus and Hulu bundle because it's only like nine bucks. Now I'm trying to save money. That is saving money. <laughs> I'm saving money by not having either <laughs> of them. It's girl math. It works, Tay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mine's not really a recommendation, but it's all the new Quiet Place. It's an all right movie, middle of the road kind of movie for me. Nice. I saw the first so take that weekend as you that will. COVID came out. Yeah. Was it? I saw the first Quiet Place when uh, COVID came out. It was like the weekend right before mm-hmm. the country shut down. That was <laughs> Fun. wild. You know what movie I saw right before the country shut down? Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> last one I, say, I saw that one too. So that must have been my last one right before the country shut down. Nice. I have a bit of an anti recommendation. Um, Sting. <laughs> go out there and rewatch Mission Impossible Two. Oh, but that's the worst one. Yeah, it, it is. But <laughs> is it? Is probably. it was an anti recommendation? So yeah, it probably still is. I meant like as in like, well, I I don't know what I meant, but <laughs> I recommend that... at least going back and and trying it because you might be surprised or you might not be, but you might be surprised. Or not. But maybe. The best thing that came <laughs> from that movie was the the Metallica song. Appreciate Tom Cruise's long hair era. Oh, right. yeah. No, thank you. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm not going to recommend it for the podcast, but I'm just saying. Maybe, 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 you know, maybe you'll appreciate it a little bit this time around. I don't know. I certainly did. Still gave it a one and a half, but I <laughs> appreciated it. All right. Thank you so much to y'all for listening to this episode of the Film Freaks podcast. Um, we will talk at you in two weeks when the next episode airs. I am Yummy the Ferret, and I'm here with Radio Waffles, the animation, Ray of Positivity. Also, happy, happy birthday from all of us to you. We wish it was our birthday so we could party too. Hey. Yay! Happy birthday! Yay. Happy, happy birthday, greedy! I, I got the song sung in uh, Spanish and now American. So there Yay. you go. Yay! <laughs> All right, have a great, great day. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.